Canada's Wonderland is the premier amusement park in Canada and also one of the strongest parks in the Cedar Fair chain. This giant park features 17 different roller coasters, including a trio of supersized B&Ms. Then you also have one of the deepest and weirdest flat ride lineups in the world to complement those coasters. So in this video, I will rank this Canadian park's top 25 best rides and attractions. Before starting the countdown, I want to note that this list will not include any attractions at the attached Splashworks water park, because I've only experienced the attractions on the dry side during my visits. But the water park does look to have some fun slides. I also will not be including any upcharge attractions, because I haven't done the ones at Canada's Wonderland. But I have ridden clones of these rides at other parks, and the Sky Coaster especially is a real rush. Finally, I also will not be including a few of the park's roller coasters. Ghoster Coaster and Thunder Run will miss the list due to their smaller size and limited thrills, but they're great for kids and families. Then, both the Bat and Flight Deck will miss this list because of their horrifically rough and uncomfortable experiences that I do not recommend. Number 25, Timberwolf Falls. This Hopkins Shoot the Shoots ride is a soaker. You have a zippy drop followed by a massive and drenching splash. Number 24, Wild Nightmares. This rare Huss Roundup is much larger than the others out there. You get nice G's at the start and the base when the ride goes vertical. Then because of the size, the G's sort of subside at the top, causing you to uneasily rock side to side. Number 23, Sugar Shack. This little teacup ride looks innocent, but the tubs are extremely easy to spin, resulting in the park's most dizzying experience. Number 22, Fly. This is a larger mock wild mouse than usual. It starts with a large and zippy first drop before going into the usual section of hairpin turns. Those elevated turns offer some nice laterals. The finale isn't as wild as some mice, but this is a solid family coaster if you can beat the crowds here. This ride always seems to have a lengthy line. Number 21, Soaring Timbers. This is a bizarre flat ride. This Mondial Inferno looks like it should flip riders head over heels countless times, but I don't think it ever fully inverts. However, it comes darn close, and those near flips cause some hang time. This ride is extremely disorienting between the spinning arm and gondolas, plus the rocking. One other downside with this attraction is the extremely cramped seats. Avoid this ride if you're claustrophobic. Number 20, Mighty Canadian Mindbuster. This out and back wood coaster cuts through the Splashworks water park, so you get some great head choppers dodging slide supports and pathways. The layout itself is pretty mild, as I noted in a review. Most of the bunny hills are too drawn out to offer any airtime. This coaster does offer some laterals though, and despite its nickname as the Spine Buster, I find it tolerable as long as you avoid a wheel seat. Number 19, Lumberjack. This Samperla Hawk fits in perfectly with the Canadian section of the park, and it offers a very fun experience with plenty of hang time as you slowly invert over the top. Don't expect heavy positive G's here. Number 18, Riptide. This Mondial top spin is set up differently in the Huss versions as you have two separated rows, but it offers an ultimately similar ride experience. You have three rotations where you're held upside down to offer some great hang time. Then the resultant rocks out of this maneuver violently swings you back and forth. I wish this one had a rapid series of flips like some of the Huss top spins, but the hang time makes the ride for me. Number 17, Time Warp. I don't hate Samperla Folares like most, but I will admit you can hit your head on the cage if you aren't careful on the turns. I typically stand as far up as possible to jam my shoulders into the vehicle to brace my body and minimize movement. If you can get a comfortable ride, this layout does have some redeeming value. The two barrel rolls offer fantastic and downright scary hang time as you feel your back lift off the train. Then the compact turns have some positive forces as well. Number 16, Whitewater Canyon. This Intamin Rapids ride has a scenic, heavily wooded course. Most of the rapids are duds here, but there is a soaker towards the end that'll soak a few lucky guests. Number 15, Dragonfire. This classic arrow looper may be comically dwarfed by Leviathan's brake run, but it is a decent ride for what it is. The first drop offers a little pop of airtime in the back, and then the two vertical loops offer great positive Gs. The corkscrews aren't forceful, but they are notable for spinning riders in the opposite direction as most from this manufacturer. 
While the layout is simple, it's decently smooth for an older arrow. Number 14, Boo Blasters and Boo Hill. This interactive shooting dark ride is a bit shorter than the others in the chain, but it still has plenty of targets to take aim at and most of them work. A majority of the ride is the usual black lit 2D aesthetic with ghosts and ghouls, but the finale features a creepy goblin animatronic that pops up. Number 13, Wild Beast. This wood coaster is another that gets a lot of flack, but I also find it tolerable if you avoid a wheel seat. Several of the small bunny hills offer some floater to quick pops of airtime and or lateral forces. The layout is very similar to King's Dominion's Grizzly, and while it doesn't have the same wooded location or power, it is still the park's best wood coaster. Number 12, Wonder Mountain's Guardian. This hybrid roller coaster and shooting dark ride earns the spot exclusively for the finale. I don't want to spoil what happens here, but it always catches first time riders off guard. The rest of the ride is both a subpar coaster and shooter. The outdoor drop you can see is tame and shaky. Then the shooting bit is mired by low quality animation and many broken guns. Some don't work at all, and others have triggers that get frequently stuck. Number 11, Windseeker. This 30 story tall Mondial swing ride offers a gorgeous 360 degree bird's eye view of Canada's Wonderland. This ride offers no physical thrills, just psychological ones from the height, but the visuals make this experience. Number 10, Cyclone. This Mondial Frisbee has a very short cycle, with just three max swings, but those three swings are great. They offer some decent floater airtime at the apex, plus good positive G's in the valley. This would have the potential to be one of the better Frisbees if it ran longer. Number 9, Backlot Stunt Coaster. This Premier Rides Family Launch Coaster is a cute little ride. The ride starts with a moderately punchy launch and one of the most underrated helixes in the world. I always gray out from the sustained G's here. The rest of the layout has some mild drops with little pops of airtime while passing some larger set pieces. Now unfortunately the effects are broken on this one, but it's still the park's best themed coaster by a long shot. Up next Woodman's Skyrider. The now removed Togo stand-up coaster was an underrated attraction. I liked most of Skyrider. The drops and bunny hills offered some surprising airtime, especially for a stand-up. And that vertical loop and helix had some nice forces too. The big issue with the coaster was an awkward section of trick track that was both painful and uncomfortable, especially in those stand-up trains. Number 8, Sledgehammer. This one-of-a-kind Huss flat ride looks incredible with the giant claws bouncing up and down. This ride basically feels like a drop tower as I noted in my review. You launch up into the air and then drop back down three times with the ladder actually giving some weak airtime and a stomach dropping sensation. It's a shame this ride has some reliability issues because I would have loved to see more of them. Number 7, Shockwave. This Mondial top scan doesn't run like those in Europe, not by a long shot, but it still does offer a wild experience as you're turbulently rocked back and forth while also getting sustained laterals. I didn't get too many flips in this one but there was one sequence where I was suspended upside down for a few seconds for some sweet hang time. And then this one comes frighteningly close to fly. Number 6, Drop Tower. This 23 story tall Intamin Drop Tower is a good version. You get great views of the park from the top, and the plunge offers weak floater airtime the whole way down, plus a stomach dropping sensation. The one downside with this one is that the employees give guests a countdown at the top, which detracts from the initial rush you get in most drop towers, because you know when the drop is coming. Number 5, Vortex. This aero suspended coaster is a nearly identical layout to King's Island's Bat, but this one is far more forceful. It is the best suspended coaster I've ridden. Every single turn offers a mix of wild swinging and strong positive G's, particularly in that picturesque helix around Yukon Striker. This ride is short, but is a fast and furious coaster. Number 4, Skyhawk. This Samperla Sky Roller is the park's best flat ride, if you know what you're doing. If you patiently and rhythmically rock your body and the flippers in unison, you can get these vehicles to flip at a scary rate. I've gotten nearly 50 flips in this attraction and barely been able to walk afterwards, just because of how quickly I rotated. It's a true rush and this one also offers wonderful visuals being up on the hill by Wonder Mountain. Number 3, Yukon Striker. This is the best Balger Mabiard dive coaster, as I proclaimed in a recent review. 
Unlike some that are one-trick ponies, Yukon Striker offers a full and shockingly intense layout. That signature first drop offers great floater airtime as you'd expect, then the ride's valleys and four inversions pile on the positive G's, far more than the other dive coasters. Then for variety, you have a zero-G winder chock full of hang time, and a fun finale with a bunny hill and a visually pleasing helix. Number 2, Behemoth. This B&M hypercoaster is the park's best coaster for airtime. You have a never-ending series of camelbacks, each offering several seconds of floater airtime. Then this coaster is an interesting finale unlike some B&M hypers, with the moderately forceful downward helix and a few final airtime pops. This would be a top tier hypercoaster, but it's in that next tier because many of the valleys have developed a rattle that can impact the rewrideability. See my review to learn more. And coming in number one is Leviathan. The prototype B&M Giga Coaster still offers a great ride experience. The first drop is one of the best in the world with the four to five seconds of strong and sustained floater airtime. The first turnaround is a major gray out moment for me as well. Then the rest of the coaster switches between low hills emphasizing the coaster's speed and large camelbacks with oodles of floater airtime. I do think this coaster's finale is a bit underwhelming, but that outward leg is incredible and the ride is super smooth and rewritable, which I cover in a review. So those are the top 25 best rides and attractions at Canada's Wonderland. What are your favorite rides at this Ontario theme park? How do you rate the B&Ms? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.